Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode of Leading Innovation at Work, the special new normal edition. I'm so excited about today's guest and I'd like everyone to welcome one of my favorite people and that I admire in our industry and I've been following for a while, so I'm so delighted to have him as a guest today. Welcome today, P Peter Ankersterny. Thank you, Laurie. Thanks, very kind of you to invite me to your show. Oh, it's really a pleasure. So for those of you who don't know Peter, um, I'll just embarrass him with a short introduction. He has had a number of remarkable senior leadership positions for the who's who kind of companies in our industry. He's currently the global lead of FM and experience services for Jones Lang LaSalle, JLL. And he's also the current global chair for IFMA, the International Facilities Management Association. I guess I first came across Peter a few years ago when I noticed him on LinkedIn and he consistently had these great posts and I thought they were very thoughtful. I thought they were really on point and I really thought he was really on the progressive edge and I started following him earlier on and many of you know that I share a lot of his insights uh, wherever he's worked. I've really thought you've been uh, a great contributor to our profession, Peter. So thank you so much for your leadership and contribution to our profession. Well, thanks, Laurie. That's very kind of you. I could say exactly the same of you. I also follow you on LinkedIn and love all of your posts. But So it's good that we have sort of two um, social media folks uh, coming together here uh, to discuss the future of our industry. I appreciate that. Yeah, I love LinkedIn for that. We, we get to connect with people that are like-minded, sort of that similar tribe. And I love how we use that as a platform to openly share and exchange great insights. And I just think it makes our industry better. I think it makes us better as individuals and how we lead. So I really love LinkedIn for that, as, as you well know, and I know you've used it for similar purposes. Yeah, no, but I, I, I agree. It's a great platform for that. And and, and you, can get, you can get some really, really good insights just by following the right people. Absolutely. And just watching your feed. So, so it's a great way to sort of stay updated on what's, what's happening in the industry and you know, what's the latest and greatest within some of the new trends that are coming on. Yeah, you got it. A curated like, newspaper of experts, right? Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I want to thank you so much. And I missed seeing you in person this year at the board meetings, Peter. And uh, I, I hope we'll get a chance to be together soon. But um, this year in 2020 has been quite remarkable and unusual uh, for a number of reasons. And one of the things um, you know, that Barb and I did this year was we put together a book of curated case studies of how different companies have flexed and evolved and had to adapt very, very quickly in these circumstances. And I think we're learning about the future as it unfolds in, in real time. And, and I think maybe even re reinventing the term agile as we go forward. One of the things I'd love to get your thoughts on, obviously we've had to pivot and make changes. And I think we've learned some lessons. We've been living in an experiment for the last you know, eight months now. What, I'd love to hear your thoughts, maybe three to five things. What do you think will stick around? What do you think will permanently change or be influenced going forward? And, and what lessons we've learned over the last months? Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's been a remarkable year and, and, and some of the, the changes that happened in the industry, um, I mean, has happened over the last six, seven, eight months. Uh, and, and I, I don't think a, a lot of new stuff has come out uh, during uh, the pandemic and, and during the situation that we've all been in. I think we've, a lot of the changes were already happening before uh, COVID-19, but, but the, the pandemic has just accelerated the pace of change and, and sort of the urgency. Uh, so, so I think the, the development we saw before that has just been speeded up uh, during this uh, last uh, last um, uh, eight months, um, which I, I find fascinating, uh, because we've we re reached the tipping point uh, on some of these new technologies, but also ways of working uh, that we have been talking about for the last ten years. But now they're happening, partly before because we are forced to it by the situation, but also part because uh, you know uh, companies are, are you know just dealing with the situation and the change that we're in the middle of. Uh, and trying to get the best out of it. So, uh, so you know, it's it's part of it, part of design, and part of of, of necessity. 
uh, that 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 we are dealing with some of the changes that we have seen, and some of the, the some of the big things that I think will will permanently change uh, the way we work. I think first and foremost, uh, working from home, um, we were all forced. Everybody who's in a sort of a knowledge intensive uh, type of work situation, we're forced to work from home. Um, and as you said, the experiment it sort of worked because um, I think if if we had said that. A year ago, people have said, nah, the technology is not able to do that. We can't do it at the scale that we were at uh, at the time, but we could, and it, it sort of worked. And, um, and I think uh, most companies will, will, will testify that the level of productivity has um, stayed the same or maybe have even improved uh, during um, the lockdown. Um, and I think working from home is something that's going to stay. I think... It provides a lot of flexibility. Uh, it, it, it has changed the way um, we manage our teams, uh, where we focus more on output and outcome of, of the work we do rather than just the face time and, and you know, how much time are you spending at the office, which I think was the situation to, to some extent at least uh, before. So I think some of these things have, uh, have changed and will continue uh, to evolve. Um, as, as we sort of get back to, uh, as we get back from, uh, from the COVID-19 situation, eventually, hopefully soon, uh, once a vaccine has been uh, developed. I, I, I want to pick up on two of the points that you mentioned, because I thought they were really great and maybe just even unpack them a little bit. You talked about the increased trend in remote work, and I completely agree. For those naysayers that, you know, those laggards maybe that people weren't sure or still had some lingering concerns we've demonstrated our full mobility potential right over the last seven eight months of what we could be doing what do you think about you know I, I, you hear some salacious comments like death of the office and it sounds a bit dramatic but how do you feel mobility programs will evolve and what do you think is the role of the office in the future peter I think the office has a huge role to play, but it's going to change. Uh, um, and it's, it's, I, I, I'm not one of those who yells uh, death at the office or death of the office. Um, it may be death at the office. <laughs> Maybe it's more appropriate. Hopefully not, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not no. But um, no, but it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I think the, the office is going to evolve. It's going to be a much more collaborative space. Um, it's, it's, I think, you know, um, being at home where you can do concentrated work. When I was working at the office, uh, I loved that. I'm a social person. I'm sort of very extroverted and I like that. But not every person is like me. Um, there are more introverts uh, who, who hate having that business and that noise uh, around them, who, who thrive much more in their work environment, sitting at home where it's quiet and you, you're in control of, of that. And then also uh, one of the things that I, 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 I recognized as a big disturbing factor is that you were sort of in meetings all the time. And if you are not in meeting, but you're sitting in an open plan office, you are disturbed a lot by people just approaching you, asking you a question. And, and you want to be um, approachable. You want to you talk to people. You want to, uh, you know, if there's a quick um, question you, you, can, you can answer, that by all means, let's do it. But it just, it was hurting productivity and the ability to sit and concentrate on, on the task and, and just getting the job done. So I think work, work from home or remote work is going to help us with that. So I think we are, we are in, a, in a, the workplace has evolved where the workplace now consists of the office in some shape or form. We'll, we can get back to what that is uh, probably in a moment. It's homeworking. It's working on the fly, wherever you're traveling to, you know, from a train station or an airport or whatever it is. And then it's, it's working in public places like a coffee shop. And I think all of these places now constitute sort of the work, workspace or, or where work is being done. And it's very situationally determined. So, and it may change from day to day, maybe even from during the day that, you know, now I, I've been sitting and concentrating for five hours. Now I need to talk to somebody and you may go down to the local coffee shop or, or I have a meeting uh, at the workplace with a client that takes a couple of hours and then I have a couple of hours to spare before my next meeting. So I'll just stay at the workplace and get some work done. And I, I don't need a desk for that. I need a coffee table or sofa or maybe a desk or whatever it is. Right. So I think, you know, the, the, the workplace, the office 
need to evolve to accommodate that kind of work, which is much more situationally determined, uh, where it becomes uh, what we call a JLL, a hop and club type of model, where it's, you know, think of a, of a lounge in an airport where you can go in, you have a couple of hours to spend, you can get downloaded your, your work, you can, you know, answer a few emails, you can talk to a colleague over a cup of coffee or whatever, and then off you go again uh, to, your, to catch your plane or in the office to catch your next meeting or go home to do more concentrated work or whatever you need to do. And I think that's, that's the involvement we're going to see from, uh, from the office environment, which I, I find is quite exciting. And I think, again, it's, it's a journey that we have been on over the last 10 years. We have moved from, you know, small cubicle cell offices into open plan offices. And now we're getting into that, what we call uh, the experience office where you actually come to the office to create or be part of an experience. It might, might, be, might be with a client, it might be with a team, it might be an all hands meeting, it may be a, an educational training session you wanna do at the office, but it's much more experience oriented. Um, and the workplace and, and the office needs to support that level of experience that, that you wanna have in that particular moment. I love what you're saying, Peter, because if we thought about, and I agree with accelerating forward, if you think about our biggest complaints about the office pre-COVID, it was, um, it's an interruption factory, right? Like I can't yeah. get any heads down time. No. It's too distracting, too noisy, things like that. And I couldn't find enough meeting rooms. <laughs> Those were kind of the yeah. big, big complaints about the office. And I think yeah. that if we transform the design or just tweak it a bit to be more accommodating, to be collaboration or experience centers, as you call them, and then where we do individual work or focus work can be done anywhere else that we're comfortable with. I like you, I like that public anonymity of a, you know, a coffee shop with a, you know, the buzz. It's not quiet in a coffee shop. There's people mm. coming in and out, but I love the vibe of it. Whereas other people yeah. would want to sit more in a solitary, quiet, no visual, but that's very personal, right? Yeah. And I think the, the, the metamorphosis you're talking about is really going to allow people more formal options. And I, I, I really underline what you say there. I think the other thing that you said is around the borderless office, and it's really changing our paradigms that work is what you do, not where you are. Yeah. And whether it be a coffee shop, a co-working place, your home, the office, at your cottage, even we're seeing places in New York, uh, you know, restaurants renting out, they, they don't, don't normally open till two or three o'clock. They're renting out tables inside the restaurant with Wi-Fi in the morning, or we're seeing people Airbnb style starting to rent out their homes. If you don't have a home uh, condition in New York that's conducive to work, you can go Airbnb style. So people are turning their homes into co-working areas. So we're seeing some really interesting progressions of how we're defining the workplace. Yeah. And a lot of it is being inclusive of areas outside of the, the traditional office, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, last week I had my first travel for seven months uh, to Amsterdam. Uh, and it was, it, was, it was actually nice to travel again, although it was a little bit sort of, uh, you know, with the mask and a little bit of a hassle. But, but it, was, it was good to get out. And uh, I've, I visited an, uh, a co-working, co-living uh, space called Soku uh, down, downtown Amsterdam. And that was actually a, a sort of a hotel where it, where you could stay for a couple of months. Uh, you have an apartment with a little kitchen and stuff like that. And on top, on the top floor with the beautiful view, they had a co-working space, which was exactly what you were saying. You know, very creative space, very, you know, they had punching bags and they had all sorts of things uh, just to make it fun and lively. Um, and and people will, would meet up there and have meetings and work and get some work done. It, it requires a special type of person, I guess, if you're very sort of introverted, you want to, have complete quiet when you're concentrating that's probably not the place for you but but for those who are it's a fantastic place and it's really uh, it's really cool and has that vibe to it I, I would love to work from places like that and i think we'll see more of those varieties of work that that fits individual needs and that's actually the uh, sort of the hub um, model from what i spoke before i think we'll see i think we'll we'll see the the big corporate head offices they will remain and they will change into these experience places, which is going to be much more of an extension of the brand. 
So you have, for example, Nike's uh, head office is like this big track and field if football uh, type of office where you can do all sorts of sports uh, in and around it, uh, which I think is a fantastic example of a brand statement of, you know, what is the brand and what is the brand all about and how do you, how do you um, um, show that through your office design and the people working there and the culture you have in the office. Uh, and then th I think there's going to be a lot of hubs and the hubs may not necessarily be owned by the company. They can be co-working places where you have 40, 50, 100, 200 people sitting there that, that you just have those spaces and people come in and out based on what their requirements are. But you just have that space available for your staff so they can go in. And, and then locally, um, you might actually have also a hub or a co-working space or you want to have people working from home. And I think that's the flexibility we're going to see in the future, which, which probably reduces the, the footprint or the portfolio of assets uh, but and, and makes it much more flexible uh, than what, what you're using already. So I think it's, it's, and I think we are beginning to see some of those changes happening. Uh, we can see it with some of our clients in JLL that are talking about, you know, what can we do during the pandemic where we, where we don't have a, a high level of occupation in the workplace anyway. This is if you can afford it and you're not too sort of uh, impacted in your business on, on the situation. This is a perfect time for you to make some of these changes happening in terms of designing and setting up uh, the workplace of the future and what you believe in as a company. And I think the people side will come along with the physical side now, yeah. right? Where there was sometimes some disparity there of, you know, it was easy to design the space, but to get people to change their behaviors and work a little bit differently or not resist a different way of working has always been a challenge, but people have been forced into those um, situations and they have to accommodate it. I, I, I agree everything with what you're saying about the hub environment and I think it's going to be accelerated with the sharing economy. I yeah. think that's going to continue. I think of uh, workspace like Swiss cheese. There's Swiss cheese all around us, right? So just how we get better at leveraging that through formal structures is going to continue to be very interesting. And like you say, Peter, I think you're so right. This is a trend that was coming but I yeah. think it's just going to be accelerated and it's maybe skipped two or three years because of the conditions that we're in now. Yeah. Hey, Peter, I want to ask you about something you said um, a few minutes earlier around productivity. And one of the things I'm seeing is with people, so many people working remote, one of the questions I'm starting to get asked again, it, it comes in waves, is around how do you measure productivity of, of remote workers? And I have my own opinions of it, but I wanted to hear, are you getting that question again? And how do you respond to that question about productivity and measuring outcomes versus physically being in the office? Yeah, it's a, I think it's a difficult one. And I think there's, there's probably not, uh, I don't think anybody sort of found the right solution because measuring productivity on knowledge work is, is difficult uh, sort of in the first place. But, um, but I think what we're hearing from clients is that they're seeing that that the productivity or at least the outcome, the quality of, of the work that people are doing is, is as high as it was in the office, is, if not higher in some instances. So, so if you just measure on, you know, the, the lawyer's ability to turn out cases and, and you know, work on some of the stuff that he or she needs to work on, uh, and, and that's the pure measure, then I, I guess you can, you can see some of that, you know, measuring the quality of, 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 of that work is probably a slightly more difficult, but if it's up to the individual manager and sort of a, 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 a subjective assessment of that level of productivity, what we are hearing is that that productivity is at least as, as the same level as it was before we start working from home in some of these aspects. In terms of the measures, I know that Leesman, Leesman Index um, out of the UK, uh, have have begun to sort of work on a productivity measure, uh, which they also had for the office. Uh, they now also have from working from home. Um, we have some 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 surveys that we do also from uh, from JLL uh, that that we that we try to measure this as as well. But again, it's 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 a very subjective. It's answering a questionnaire in terms of how how do you feel that your workplace support the way you're working, the Wi-Fi, the 
tables the sound and all that stuff. I'm not sure it's an accurate measure of, of real productivity. If, if I'm a lawyer, do I actually turn out more cases uh, or, or do the quality of my work improve while I'm sitting at home? Uh, that, that is still a very subjective uh, question, I think, at this point in time. I do. Agree I don't know if you, you you probably have some more experience with this field than I do. So I'm I'm sure I, I would be interested to hear what your what your views are on that topic. Well, I, I think you're right on in in several points that I I think people are working harder because of a few reasons. They're not commuting, and they are worried about being invisible. And they're, you know with furloughs and it's honestly they want to make sure that they're being present and visible. So I do see people working harder and longer and creating those outputs. And then I think that, you know, one of the things I, I ask when I hear that question is, how did you measure productivity before? Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be any different. And it's usually a leading indicator that there's, um, I don't want to say a trust issue, but there's some, some flaw in the way that they're uh, able to manage and have that insight into how people are producing outcomes. And with knowledge workers, it's not like widgets. So I, and we end up talking about the annual performance review process, which I think is a terrible anachronism in today's day of working, that you would set your goals once a year and then like, Peter, what stays the same for a year anymore? Nothing, right? So it just no. seems like, I think these, if you look at how people manage gig workers, which are also knowledge workers, and you, we can learn some lessons for managing by outcomes there. And I think taking shorter bursts of outcomes with assignments and outputs, I think that's a much more agile way of managing performance than the, than the, current, um, than the current way that we do it in the annual performance. I use a method called three by three, which is every Monday I sit with my team and what were the three things you accomplished last week and what are the three things you're going to accomplish this week? And it just gives us a pulse to communicate and rally around. And it's a much better way of tracking people's progress and outcomes in a shorter sprint than it is yeah. in the annual process. And then you get to know pretty quickly if somebody's struggling and they need some coaching or support or, you know, how engaged and attending a meeting is not an outcome, right? It's, it's some no, sort exactly. of an output. So you, yeah. if you look at it that way, so that's another yeah. way we've done it, but I'm, I'm hearing that more because of, people's concerns with remote work. And that tells me usually as an indicator, there needs to be more change management and more support of the management layer so that they're more comfortable with managing by outcomes and the skill set yeah. necessary than, you know, managing by butts and seats at the office, yeah. if you will. Right. But, but that's that, I think that's an interesting perspective and, and not, not touching so much on the productivity issue, but, but I think manage, management by trust or management, you know, changing the management paradigm where we actually need to trust our people more. Um, and, and we are forced to do that now also because we don't see them and we can check in with them, but ultimately we have to trust uh, how people are working and how they're managing their time and how they're managing a task. And then we can get the outcome, but sometimes it'll take weeks before we actually see that outcome. So we have to trust them in that process. And I think that's, for some people, that's a huge change also, that you're not going in, looking over the shoulder, checking in on your people almost every day physically, uh, but, but you have to trust them and then you have to check in virtually uh, on your team. And that, that's a different type of dialogue you're getting to them. And that also begs another question because I think to your point earlier, I think there's a tendency uh, that, that, that I think, you know, some people would have thought when we started up this experiment that, that maybe people were goofing off and they, they didn't, you know, spend the time in front of the screen, in front of the work that they were supposed to do. Um, and, and I think maybe, maybe because of the wrong reason that people are fearing of their job and the situation and stuff like that. But, but I think what we are seeing is completely the opposite. I mean, there's, there's a lot of talk about burnout these days. People are spending yeah. way too much time at work and really having a different difficulty in, in, sort of delineating or, or differentiating between, you know, when am I off work and when am I on work? And because you are working from home most of the time, then it's so easy to just, you know, go in and you can see, you know, a couple of mails runs in late at night, then you answer them or you go in and 
your computer is open anyway and it's standing there on the desk so you attend to it because you would just want to get it out of the way uh that type of thing so so that that situation where you're never off work uh is probably much more dangerous and much more harmful uh, than the opposite actually so uh, so i think that's also part of that new management paradigm that we are talking about that 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 our, our we as managers have to be much more caring about our employees and also understand the situation that they're in not only from a productivity point of view but from sort of the whole human being point of view are you feeling all right how are you dealing with all the anxiety and stress around you know the situation around COVID, about your work are you taking time off? You know, those types of questions. And, and for some, those questions are, are more new and more difficult to, to deal with than sort of the more typical uh, command and control type of management. I, I totally agree with you. And I think two things, uh, just to underline in what you said was a mental health. And I'm really, I'm really delighted that we've taken mental health, health uh, you know, away from being a taboo, we've taken it from the subconscious to the conscious mind, because so many of our colleagues have suffered in some way during this period of isolation, and just making sure that we're reaching out to people, not for utilitarian reasons, you know, structure a meeting, and it's very utilitarian, versus some of the pleasantries we used to exchange. So yeah. mental health is one. And then I think the other thing that will accelerate to your point is around management style and techniques. Yeah. So equipping that middle layer of management, which are maybe don't have as much experience under their belt with management as people that have been in it uh, longer, and just giving them the tools to be able to manage virtual teams by outcomes in a very different way than mm. we were taught to manage. And I think that will come into its time pretty quickly. I think both of your points are really astute, Peter. Mm. No, thanks. I I think it's 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 a time for change, and I think that management change is going to be a very big part of this experiment yeah. that we are going through. Yeah, you're so right. Well, Peter, as I mentioned, I am a huge fan and please continue to post and I'll be glad to share an exchange. If somebody wants to get in touch with you or follow you, how would they go about doing that? Well, I, uh, I'm very active on LinkedIn, so I'm always available on LinkedIn and I also answers my, I answer my uh, messages on LinkedIn fairly quickly, uh, but I'm also uh, on, uh, on Twitter. No, that's great. So uh, if you're not already following Peter, you should. Uh, he's a terrific influencer, uh, one of the top people that I follow. And I, I'm so grateful to have you as a guest today, Peter. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. Uh, it's great to have you as a guest. Uh, please follow Peter in social media of your choice and look forward to seeing you on the other side. Thank you, Laurie. Thanks so much for the invitation. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it.